My name is Kain Chan, the Tech Pro, and today I'm going to be telling you about Docker's containers and Kubernetes. Now the problem is sometimes times are so much mixed up that simple things are made to become so complex. So if you go online, for instance, and type Kubernetes, you'll see a whole lot of things. For instance, you see Kubernetes, OpenShift, Jenkins, you have OpenStack, Terraform, Azure, GitHub, and a whole lot of things. Now, all these things, I'll tell you they're all crap compared to the concepts. These things are tools, and they tend to be making these tools so important that you don't understand the concept behind it. So that is why I've tried to make all this right up, so I can explain you, to you the difference between the tools and the concepts. Now, if you scroll down this page, you can read it on your own. You can find the link in the description box. Now, these are the concepts. For instance, microservices is a concept, containerization, orchestration, service discovery, and source control. But all of these, you see Kubernetes, Jenkins, and JIT, and so on and so forth, all these are just technologies. They are just tools, software that intelligent programmers have written out there, and they are simply making it, uh, overhyping it, and making it look so important. So now let me explain to you the concept of Docker's containers, and Kubernetes. So let's start with microservices. Microservices is simple. It simply means that if you have a large uh, program, normally if you build an application, you build the application, write the source code, compile it, test it, and if it's running, you deploy it to the server. And you have this application, users will connect to these applications, and then uh, maybe get data from database in the back end, right? All right, so this is called monolithic. It's called monolithic, meaning that it's a single application, right? In case of microservices, instead of to have a single big app application, you have several applications. Or this big application has been divided into several applications. These small applications are called services. So each of them might have their own little database attached to each of them, right? So that's a different thing. They can also have a central database as well. But the fact that you've broken this application down into several uh, sub-applications or services is called microservices, okay? That is the concept of microservices. Now it's called microservices because these applications, these individual applications, they are independent. They can also work together. So they can in independently be deployed to the server and they can run independent of other microservices. Take note that it is the same application we are talking about. That is the concept of microservices. This explanation I have given it out here. Now, what is Docker? Docker, again, is a tool that you use to create microservices. So actually, if you have this big application and you actually separate them into smaller applications, you can now put them in something. You can use Docker. Docker is simply a tool used to deploy this application. So instead of to deploy these applications into the server, you put them inside or you use, use Docker to deploy them. So basically, if this is your production server, if this is your production server and this is your dev, so you have Docker sitting in between here, Docker. So it's sitting between development and production. So this application is broken down and put in, in Docker and then is able to be deployed to production. So that is how Docker works. Now, what is a container? I think I've made it clear here. A container is simply an instance of an image. When you are deploying these smaller applications into Docker, you are actually creating an image of this application. So this explanation is clear. It says Docker is a platform for, for building and running containers. It means that when you break an application down into microservices, you can use Docker to create what is called Docker images. An image is simply your microservice packaged together with all that is needed to run it, the runtime dependencies and everything. Once an image is created using Docker, then this image can be distributed or deployed and can be run on any platform. A container is an instance of an image, right? So when a Docker image, your microservice starts running, what is happening then, a container is automatically created. So a running image, remember a microservice is deployed 
or package into an image. Once that image is triggered and it starts running, then it runs inside a container. So a container, take note, for quiz is an instance of an image, all right? Now, what is Kubernetes? To understand Kubernetes, you need to understand the concept of orchestration. So Kubernetes, again, is a tool that has been developed by some intelligent people. The concept you need to understand is orchestration. Orchestration is a key word. So orchestration simply means that you have several microservices, and these microservices have to communicate among themselves. They have to have a way to communicate among themselves, share messages together, uh, share data, and so on. So this is a concept of orchestration. A way microservices, microservices communicate among themselves is the concept of orchestration. So again, I'm not going to say much, but I, I put the, uh, the complete explanation in this place so you can easily read it. Now we have related concepts. So we have concept of service discovery. Service discovery means when you have several microservices, maybe dozens of them or hundreds of them, how does a client application making a request know which service actually contains the information he wants, which service to actually route this requires to. So service discovery is a concept that helps find a particular service to handle a particular client request. So in case of, let me just draw the architecture. So if you have a client, so here we have service discovery. So this service discovery will now have the responsibility to find which microservice is coming from, which microservice to use to handle requests coming from this client. So you can either route it to this one, or 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 route it to this one. That is a concept of service discovery. And another tool that you may come across is called Eureka. Eureka is simply a tool for, for handling service discovery. So final thoughts, I want you to focus on the concepts and not on the tools. So tools are a whole lot of them, they are confusing, they are everywhere. But learn the concept, once you learn the concept, when you see the tool or the name of the tool, you don't get confused by several tools maybe doing the same thing and by different vendors. I would like to stop here. If you like more of this, uh, you can subscribe to my channel on YouTube, find it in the description box below this video. And then uh, also let me know if this has been informative for you. Leave me a comment. Uh, below this this video and then take note this is what we've covered today microservices containerization orchestration service discovery source control uh, that is simply means being able to track changes in your source code when you are writing programs for an application you'll be able to track the versions track changes be able to roll back be able to commit and stuff like that